the self timer or the delay action that can go in it's held in place with a single screw it locates into a position at this end on the mechanism plate it drops into position if it's not seated correctly you'll know because it won't sit flush it probably also won't run correctly I'm just holding back the tab on the end there with the tip of my screwdriver listening to that run down the action's nice and smooth that's good so I'll just nip that screw up I've lubricated these trains with graphite powder so I'm just going to blow that out once more to make sure there are no stray particles of graphite floating around loose and we should be good to go that's looking very hopeful I think that that should be good and I can just about close this shutter up once I've decided I've got my speed set correctly so first of all I just need to clean these components with a bit of naphtha lubricate that curved internal cocking rack where I need to with a bit of uh, molybdenum paste First I'm just cleaning these parts up, partly to remove the old grease because it might be dried out and gone sticky and partly to remove the grease because it's probably also picked up dust and dirt over time which makes it act more like a uh, grinding paste than a lubricant. So by removing it all we're starting nice and clean and I can lubricate as I wish and generally speaking I'm using molybdenum paste because it's comparatively dry and not likely to gather up rubbish right so this little cam here this this little pinion arrangement actually cocks the main cam and it's driven by the curved rack here so I'll just wipe the stem of that it's some molybdenum paste that just sits in position the curved rack I usually wipe around the inside that's where it runs around the lens tube and around the outside because there's various things that happen around the outside and that's it there's virtually nothing on there, it's just you only need the barest of wipes with molybdenum paste. So I've got to get my spring over that post, like that. Pull this into position. Get the timing right here. That's it. So the last tooth I'll zoom you in. This last tooth on this pinion engages with the last notch in this curved rack. Make sure that the tab on the self timer here is back behind that tab there and we're good to go. The speed cam setting plate, these not knobs and bumps over here, they're where it sets the various shutter speeds. I once round the inside there with the molybdenum paste, that's where it runs around the lens tube. And that's pretty much it. And I can fit this in position, making sure the B lever is not trapped underneath there. I'll swing this round to here which is the eighth of the second position and we'll see what we get that's slightly fast let's try the 15th definitely fast okay so I need to move my speed train in inwards towards the center for greater engagement 
So let's do that. I'll just cock that first. Swing that out of the way. Stacking that screw off slightly. Move this speed chain in slightly. Hopefully that's not too much. Couple it back up to our pinion. Make sure my teeth count's right. It looks okay. And try it again. That's the eighth of a second position. That sounds better. And the fifteenth. Yeah, that sounds good. I'll go and test that on my shutter speed tester. Here's the one second. But um, it sounds pretty good to me. I'll tie the self timer. Let's put this on a uh, an eight. Try the self timer. Set that. Start that running. That's good. That all appears good to me. Okay, well I'll try this on my shutter speed tester and then be back. Well that tests up is okay. So next thing to do is put this little latch in place. And this little latch's job is to stop you from being able to to press the shutter if the shutter the shutter release if the shutter's not actually cocked. So let's hold that spring back and rotate this. Make sure it's, yeah, that's good. That's all under tension. The speed settings cam plate can go back in. Make sure that's sitting down flush. That's good. And I will hold that in place temporarily by screwing the front retainer ring in place. Okay, that's in no danger of falling apart now while I do the other parts of the shutter, which basically means fitting the shutter to the outer case and then putting the front rings in place. I'll get onto that. The outer case, I just need to check this and clean it. Generally, wipe around the inside track there where the curved rack runs just in case there's any dust or grit or in there anything in there that's likely to cause problems wipe the curved pusher there's not much coming off that which tells me that it hadn't hadn't been lubricated in any way at all previously Normally what I do here for lubrication is just use my molybdenum paste and wipe the top and bottom edges and the inside face of the rack. Top and bottom edges and inside and outside of that curved pusher. Drop these into place. First the curved pusher, then the, the, the toothed rack which obviously has to line up with the slot in the back here so that it can couple to the camera. Now I've got to get this on the shutter, which means getting the alignment correct, making sure the curved pusher is behind the cocking lever. That's all looking good. That flash contact, is that going to move into place? Yes, it did. Three screws. The two countersunk head screws are different diameters. The one on this tab here at the end is a smaller diameter. If you mix them up, it won't go well.
that's good and the flash contact the clamp for the flash contact let's we'll run that screw up let's give it a couple of turns it doesn't need to be screwed in until it's disappeared that's the back of the shutter the control rings at the front here I'll give these a quick wipe with some uh, naphtha and then reassemble these. I'll bring you back, you don't need to see me doing that, I'll bring you back when I'm ready to lubricate them. The front uh, lens mount section here is often quite greasy with graphite grease. There was graphite grease used on the little detent section here for the, that provides a click stop for the shutter speeds. Unfortunately, it's often been done exceptionally generously and the graphite grease is spread absolutely everywhere. It certainly doesn't need to be everywhere. Of course, it's a bugger to get off. And it will work its way around to the uh, engraved numbers and so forth and they won't look nice and clean. If it's allowed to. Because that's that piece, that's clean enough. Here's our setting ring for our shutter speeds. This is the coupling ring that couples the settings, the shutter speed setting ring to the aperture setting on that uh, shutter. There's a few little spots of corrosion on this. This is nickel plated steel. There's a few little spots there. I'll just scrape off any high spots, if there are any. Now it's not feeling particularly bad. And that I will rub with a bit of molybdenum paste. top and bottom, inside and outside edges and it doesn't need any more than that. And that fits into this ring. So that tab drops down into that space. That's good to go. And this piece this is uh, shows you your aperture settings at the top of the shutter. Early cameras did not show you the aperture settings at the top of the camera. They had the aperture settings were only visible at the base of the camera. But people must have complained. They stopped doing it that way. Alright, let's see how we go here. So this ring. These two notches in the ring here and here have to couple with here and here on the shutter speed setting cam. This pin here couples with the fork in the aperture setter settings there. That, that in place, that in place, there you go, that's all, all good. can remove my retaining ring now. Here's an aperture settings number ring. There's a little notch on the bottom of it and it couples to the ring below it. This ring with the detents on it for the shutter speeds, normally I'll run around that with the molybdenum paste. Fit this in position, it's got a little notch in the back of this ring, it drops into position. The number plate numbers are right there on the side. Fit the front retaining ring. And normally I just run that down using a toothpick or a little bamboo skewer is good for doing that too. I don't use the tip of a screwdriver typically. You'll end up slipping and scratching something. 
I'm checking the feel of the settings. If it's too tight, you'll feel too much stiffness there. There should be a positive click that you're getting from that uh, the detent. But if it's too tight, it's just, it's just yeah, that's, that's very stiff now. That's too tight, so I'm going to take that back at least one notch. Try it again. That's still too tight. Try that. Well, probably more than it needs to be. Okay, I've got the screw hole lined up there, and I will fit the tiny screw which locks the position of my retaining ring. This is always fun, as I said earlier, it's a very short screw, it's quite small, it's not always easy to get it started correctly, so that one went okay. Right, that is my shutter done. I want to clean up the retaining ring and the shims from the back. One of these shims is paper. It's very, very thin. Thin paper shims are very delicate. What I'm wanting to do is clean this because it'll be oil soaked. And I want that oil out of it. You've got to be very careful doing this because if you're rough, you'll tear it. And that doesn't mean it's useless if it's torn. It can just be awkward to get it to stay in place while you're putting things together. And they do have a purpose. They were used to match a lens and shutter assembly to a camera body so that the camera body could have its focus mechanism and its range finder all set and ready to go and the shutter and lens assembly could be just fitted to the camera and they were matched to the camera by selecting the appropriate shims so that the shutter and lens assembly was spaced the correct distance on the camera body so that the uh, image would be sharp at the film plane. Right, so that's all good. I've wiped my retaining ring, which I'm just going to screw on here temporarily. Why does that not want to start? That's better, it's running on now. Blowing away a bit of cotton there. One of the problems with cleaning things with these cotton buds is that you end up with tiny threads of cotton around the place trying to cause you grief. The rear lens group. Now inevitably, or almost inevitably, the outside of this will be a little bit greasy from oil from the uh, focus helical. And so I normally clean the outside of the, the body of the lens first before I do anything. So you can see how much dirt came off that. And then I can turn my attention to cleaning the glass and using glass cleaner on a cotton bud. I'll clean that and as you clean it you rotate the cotton bud so that you are presenting a, uh, a different part of the cotton bud to the glass at any given time. And that helps prevent a the possibility of you collecting a fragment of a tiny fragment of grit in your cleaning process and then proceeding to grind it into the lens. That looks okay, that's the inside surface. I'll put that in place, screw that in. You only needs to be finger tight that rear group, you don't need to go mad. And I will clean the outside surface, which of course is usually somewhat dirtier. I've still got uh, 
marks on there I want to try and remove. Usually you don't need to disassemble the front or rear lens groups on a 3C. Normally it is sufficient to clean the easily accessible surfaces Looking at the state of this, there's certainly a mark on the surface there. I'm just going to prod it that with a toothpick. If it's something stuck to the surface of the glass, when you see um, defects on the surface of the glass, they can be something stuck to the glass or they can be a chip in the glass because a chip in the glass from the something having struck the glass you can spend all day trying to clean chips away I can tell you chips do not come off but if there's something stuck on the glass it could have been something quite sticky it might not clean away easily with the glass cleaner it might need to be prodded out a bit Yeah, that's pretty good. Quite happy with the state of that. The front group. Now this is pretty much a rerun of what I've just done with the rear group. First I'll start with some naphtha and clean around the mount. The front mount of course is removable on the three C's. It means that people will have had the lens out. Almost inevitably they'd have had their dirty fingers all over everything. And so it's not unusual to have a lot of dirt and rubbish around the, the mount there. That's quite good. You may see marking and staining on that nickel plated surface. That's corrosion. That corrosion will be from someone having handled that with their bare hands. And uh, just the skin oils and perspiration and so forth have just corroded that away. And you end up with permanent fingerprints looking at an into a surface like this which is heavily concave it's not a, often not easy to tell how clean you've got it normally you can tell how clean you have things by viewing reflected light off the surface but of course with an internal uh, concave surface it's not quite so easy all right let's put that in place and clean the front surface this is quite dirty and so I'm taking great care to rotate my cotton bud I'll have to go over this another time I think it looks like I'm oh no it is coming clean I thought I was getting a smear on there that wouldn't come off now oh, that looks fine that looks lovely and clear that's good so there is our shutter assembly all ready to go back on the camera body but of course I haven't assembled the camera body yet so that's next <laughs> 